I, I usually play a song, and it's by Ozzy, and it's a dreamer, and it's about dreaming. And it's sadly, uh, most people on planet Earth live in dream world. I'm going to get into it. And I'm going to bring the Pope and the President as well. So sit back. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, okay. Uh, my idea for my show uh, is to bring truth out. So when I get into topics, if you have something, you can email me, text me, whatever. Uh, I will respond if it's pertaining to what we're talking about. I feel right now, uh, I'm a dreamer. I would hope that aliens or the little gods, I call the, the uh, deities little gods, will come down and help save mankind before the human race destroys the planet. Because the Pope and the President aren't going to be saving the oceans anytime soon. The creatures on the planet that are dying, the forest, or even the food we eat. So uh, I call it, I'm a dreamer in that way. I mean, I hope, wish that it does, but I don't sit here waiting for it to happen because I know it's probably not going to. So my name is Tommy Hawksblood. The title, uh, adventuresintothestrange.com is my webpage. Uh, this is Project Camelot. Thanks to Carrie Cassidy. I uh, hope you enjoy the show. Hope you get something out of it. Uh, so greetings, everyone. I'd like to do a few things before I start my show to keep everybody up to date what's happening on the planet. But the title for today is Make Me President, or maybe the new pope. Uh, before I get into that, I just want to say the idea of my show is, to me, it's important because what I want to do is help everyone look a little deeper inside themselves to touch their own spirit, their own soul, understanding who and what they are, not what anybody else is or what everybody wants you to believe you are. But I want to give you a way to search for a higher level of your own consciousness and your own enfoldment. Not like the workshops out there. It's not like you got to pay to hear anything. Nothing's that complicated. Nothing should be that expensive. When it comes to spiritual truth, for a word, it doesn't have to be any of that. It should be cheap and simple. Because if it's not, people will, not, will fall by the wayside and not be involved with what's really happening. So I, I'll get into that uh, a little bit later. But I want to do uh, this part about the dreaming thing and how we're going to get out of where we are. OK, how do we make this a better place? How do we become better people? Well, I'm not talking about going out and get a job for $100,000 because that's not going to make you a better person, really. It might make your house better, your car better, but uh, inside you doesn't change much. Well, I'm going to keep you up on the latest things happening right now because I always feel what's going on in the moment is where we are. So just so you know, today, within the past hour, Chile had another 6.4 earthquake and a uh, 5.1 as well. In the past hour, the ring of fire has been escalating so bad. Indonesia has been getting clobbered the past week with a 6.6. .6. Uh, so we have this ring of fire that's growing hotter and hotter. And if you notice, the places that are getting hotter is Australia, all the islands around it, not Australia itself, and I don't know why. Uh, every single island around it has up to 6.9 earthquakes. Uh, then we go up to South America, the whole borderline of that. But Puerto Rico and those islands up there are getting clobbered as well. Not with like six and sevens, but every day, three or four, Puerto Rico and the islands around there. So it has never been this bad in the past hundred years. So we're going to go into why is the Pope and the government talking about global warming. Is it real? Is it not? Uh, if you don't follow news, if you don't go on the internet and check out things like that, you're not going to find the truth because nobody out there mainstream is going to tell you. All right. If you notice what the Pope's doing, I'm sure a lot of people are following him that don't watch TV in general uh, and see where he's going, what he's saying. Uh, and give him a lot of credit, which we will get into because I don't agree with a lot of that. Uh, he's talking about global warming. Uh, then he talks about the homeless. And then that other word, forgiveness. Well, does he want to forgive people? Uh, we'll, we'll think about it. 
do you think the Pope is going to go around the world and forgive everybody? And who is he to forgive everybody? Does he have the right to do it? Well, Catholic religion believes so. Uh, but he went out there, met with some native people, and said uh, he was asking them for forgiveness. Really? Uh, that's something, there's something really bad going on there. Uh, I'm just trying to get a couple things out before we get into some of these in a little more hardcore way. Uh, why should they forgive the Pope? They shouldn't. I don't believe they should. He mentions the number of Muslims. He mentioned a number like 500 Muslims. Did he mention 49 million Native Americans? No, I don't think so. And I wonder why. And then he, he, he expects forgiveness. Uh, oh, well, we forgive you for destroying our, our people. Uh, really. Uh, in history, the reason why Native people were easily killed by Spanish and Christians because they were called demons. The same as when Moses came off the mountain and he looked at the people and he said, they're all demons, so kill them. So he killed 3,000 people. So by, by being a demon, you're not a human. So when you kill a demon, you're not killing a human. So you can kind of get away with it in, in man's ego, all right? Uh, like Moses thought he got away with it. So how many people out there right now think the Pope's visit to the United States is really important. Well, we, we noticed one person in the government stepped down today, and he was crying even because of the Pope. Do you think the Pope set something off inside him? Maybe like he's responsible for the karma that he created, and he doesn't want to create anymore? Just interesting that he stepped down and, and actually was crying, and he was, to me, one of the most hardcore people in our government. And if he stayed there, I think we would be going into another serious problem, being like shut down again. Well, people out there, do you follow a religion? I know a lot of people say, well, I have my own religion. Well, if you have your own religion, it's a religion, right? If you call it a religion, it's a religion. If you call it whatever you want, a spiritual way, it's still a religion. Uh, definitions are pretty much man-made. So when we say we follow any specific thing, it's what we create. And we don't have to create a religion. We could say we live life, which we all do. But what we have our faith to, where we get our guidance from, is pretty important. And that determines what we actually are and who we believe in and who we follow. Do you think the Pope is actually helping or giving good ideas to pregnant women? With the idea of, well, if they had an abortion, if they come out and beg for forgiveness, they can be forgiven. Who's he to forgive them for doing that? Uh, again, uh, the Pope takes this great power, and it's only given to him by the people that follow him. And to say he has the biggest following on planet Earth probably right now, uh, for one person anyway. And then he talks about we should go out and take the homeless in. Uh, how many people did the Vatican say they they'd taken in two families or something? Two families? Is that going to change anything in the homeless realm? Uh, does he suggest everybody in the United States and everybody in every country takes two homeless families in? Yeah, that would change the world, but uh, it would make it a serious problem as well. And then we got the poor people. Well, I got a couple of remedies I'm going to get into. How do we remedy, remedy some of the problems with money that we have right now? Well, there's, there's things we can get into. I don't want to get into too many things, but a starting point where we can start. But back to this Pope talking about Muslims and in the same breath, Native people. We are all one in his mind. We are all one people, are we? Why do we have to become born again, Christians, what are we when we become Catholics? Uh, we become part of a religion again, uh, what they did to the native people. I'm sure the Pope feels he has a great message to say. Is it different than any other spiritual person or spiritual person claiming to be spiritual? Think about it. I don't think so. 
uh, sorry to all the victims out there. Uh, we pray for them. Uh, does that change it, make it better for them? Is he going to offer, the Pope, offer anything back? I don't think so. Other than his prayers and his high anointing magic ball of water. I want to compare the Pope to another really recognized spiritual person, the Dalai Lama. Both have this great mission in life, and the one word they agree on is world peace. Peace of what? <laughs> peace of the planet, peace of the world. We're all going to be in one, one, one level of awareness. Well, just so you know, the Dalai Lama is no longer truly the Dalai Lama. He kind of retired, and there's somebody else that's in his power. I mean, he's still promoting peace, which is all he does and did for a long period of time. But sadly, and I find this a major flaw in anybody that claims anything, if you're out there preaching something, do you walk your talk? Are you living what you say you are? And I'll tell you this, the Dalai Lama will never go back to his country, Tibet, cannot go back there. He will be killed if he does. Sadly, the people that followed him, which was Tibet, a lot of people there, were killed, raped, put in jail, because they didn't give in to the Chinese after the Dalai Lama left. So, uh, again, the Pope talks about world peace. While his country was under war for 10 years or longer, and they lost the battle last year. The Chinese took over, complete control over Tibet. Is it on the news? Do we hear about it? Do we understand what went down? I don't think so. Because Tibet people, the Tibetan people that live there were begging for help. Did the Dalai Lama help? Did the Pope help? Did anybody, did the government, our government help? You have to think, why not? Well, we help Iran, Iraq, we, we deal with different countries, we deal, when we're in Vietnam, we, we, what, what do we do? We cause war. Is that help? Is that the help that Tibet would need? Well, we could have flew a lot of people out of Tibet. Only, we only would have did that is if they had something to offer us, meaning gold, oil, the new mineral that they found, I mean, a couple things. But without that, the government doesn't give away anything unless it gets something in return. Like most, like all rich people, almost all rich people, uh, even if it's a tax write-off, they give away to get that. Uh, sadly to say, his own country was taken over by the Chinese. I mean, if you watch when it was going down, the Tibetan people were begging the Dalai Lama to come back. They thought maybe he could help them, which he couldn't. But uh, while he's preaching world peace, they were being raped, murdered, and, and put in jail. All the temples were taken over except one. The one that they leave main public streets so that when tourists go there, they can get their picture in front of this one temple. Well, I'm in Tibet. Uh, really? But it's not Tibet no more. It's Chinese government. They were committing suicide, burning themselves in the street. Where was the Pope? Where was the Dalai Lama? Where was any government as far as helping them? They begged and begged. Every month they were setting themselves on fire in the middle of the streets. And you know what they did? If anybody was near them, when they set themselves on fire, they were automatically thrown in jail as accomplices. It was a horrible thing that went down. It is over. Uh, there's no uh, recuperating their land and becoming back the way they were before this takeover by China. Uh, so when we talk about world peace, what world are we talking about? Dream world? The illusionary mind world that people live in and sleep in? Or the one that they go out to work in and try to get a job or, or, or buy food to survive and things like that? Uh, Pope sitting there saying how we should help people. 
what bigger burden to the United States would be is if we allowed more people to come in. Are we paying for them? The middle class do, not the poor people and not the rich people. So uh, let's put more taxing on the people that are the hardworking people. Now, we can go into a lot more why the Pope had to talk to Congress and why he talked to UN and why he was allowed to. He's a religious person. He's not a war strategy person. He's not into war. He's so far against it. Well, it's easy to say, well, we don't do this or we shouldn't do that. I mean, it's great. Like, I was kind of comparing him to spiritual people. Most spiritual people say they feel sorry for the homeless and and, and the abused children and things like that. How many do anything about it? Even bring it out to the public to a place where people can get involved with it. Uh, the native elder said, talk is talk until it adds up to something, which it's not adding up to anything. The Dalai Lama said a lot of stuff. Uh, are they going to go after Monsanto? I doubt it. Monsanto just took over potatoes and apples now, which will mean synthetic foods that we'll be eating next year as well. So who cares? Who cares about what? What, do they, what does the Pope really care about? I got a lot to get into. I'm going to try to keep going as fast as I can because there's so many more things I do want to get into about what the Pope's involved, what, what went down and what's happening. Do we understand why he's here? Do anybody out there really know Oh, he's the angel of light, and he's bringing light to the world. What light? What the world needs now for poor people and, and homeless people is money. Not prayers. Prayers don't change the reality, even though we want it to. Now, let's go into the Vatican. Did anybody ever look at the Vatican, understand how big it is? And then what's inside the Vatican? All right. Sure, when the Pope came into power, our present Pope, the present Pope, not ours, but uh, he decided not to wear all the gold like all the other Popes. He decided not to live in the Vatican like everybody else did. He wanted to look humble. And the old saying, come in peace, I mean, it was a, an alien movie, we come in peace. Uh, it sounds good, looks good. Uh, but do you remember Schwarzenegger's movie when he was fighting the aliens? They only fought people that were ready to fight. They weren't fighting the weak and people that weren't with weapons or anything. But uh, in reality, uh, we come in peace. He came in peace. He made a lot of good statements and stuff in the very beginning. Then something happened. Now, I want everybody to listen to this because I don't think people understand who the Pope is, what he thinks he is, and where he thinks he's going to go. Well, I can't say to hell because this is hell, so you can't go much further than here. But uh, he started rewriting the Bible. He came out saying there is no hell. Well, here's his own Bible saying there's a hell, and here's him saying there isn't. So right there, he's saying he's better than all the people that wrote the Bible. Did you get that? Then... He said the story of Adam and Eve was just a story. No matter what level you study the story of Adam and Eve, it's possible to be some kind of a story of some race somewhere in some point in history of some time frame. But what race, the human race, I doubt it. The way they were created and what, what was written in the Bible contradicts everything you would know about creation. Uh, and the way God talked in the Bible, in that part of the Bible, who wrote it? Was Adam writing what, what he was saying to him at that time? Did Adam know how to write? Really? Uh, now, the Pope, again, is rewriting a few of the Ten Commandments. Well, when you become God, you can do anything you want. So if he thinks he's God, I guess he can do anything he wants. Is he looking for people to bow down to him? He wants everybody to kiss his hand. I mean, he bends over and kisses little children. But where did God say anything about that? Uh, God always talked about his father, not about the Pope. 
not about people in power. Jesus said, give to God what it deserves and give to the world what justly it deserves. I hope you follow that. God said, well, Jesus said that God, give to God what it deserves and give to the world what justly it deserves. Meaning, if you live on planet Earth, you live by the laws of planet Earth, not by the laws of God in the physical reality. The spiritual reality of the inner worlds is where you do pay homage or work with God or spirit and those things. But Jesus did say, if the laws are unjust, change them. But you do live by the laws you create. So if the laws aren't right, you rewrite the laws. So I guess the Pope thinks the Ten Commandments are not too too beneficial, so he's rewriting them. Uh, well, do we get God's help? People want to believe they do. But God said through somebody in the Bible, obviously, uh, God helps those who help themselves. What's that mean? Well, recognize who and what you are and create your mission. Like I said, find out who you are. What is that? What does it really mean to you, to your people around you, your family, your friends, your children? Uh, how does it relate to homeless people? Are you a homeless person too? Just not that you're not aware of it. You just think you got something. But are we responsible for what the government does? Or are they responsible for what we do? Well, right now, it's a matter of control. They are trying to control what we are allowed to do. Something that man seems to re uh, not think about, especially when you're a Christian or a religious person, and you believe in the Bible, the Bible wasn't written by God. It was written by man. Man has so many flaws. Uh, and perverted and twisted ideas that he creates to make his own reality what he wants it to be. People need to be responsible for their own actions, not anyone else's. You cannot be to think you're going to change the world and make them all think like you. Really? What do you think? What do you know? Why would other people want to think and act and believe the way you do? The Pope is going to see children three and four years old. Anybody thinking why? It's like when President uh, Bush was sitting there reading a, a cartoon. Supposedly it was upside down and everything, but a cartoon about a goat to all these children when 9-11 happened. And he just like kind of looked up in the days. Oh, really? Uh, did anybody focus in on that or understand it? So here we got the Pope talking to three and four-year-olds. Well, what's he saying? Remember me when you get old? Or maybe their parents have to keep saying to them, well, you met the Pope and he, whatever, they want to train him or believe, make them believe that happened when that happened. Then the Pope, not only going to talk to Native people and asking, for, telling them for, for forgiveness, uh, he's going to prisoners. Really? Why? They're desperate for new people to become Christians? Reform them? To what? Tell them they are people too. Let's talk about that. When I say prisons, I'm talking about killers and rapists. Let me shut this off. Sorry about that. Uh, the killers and the rapists. Uh, not the marijuana smokers. Not the penny stealers. Uh, but the bad people. All right, what would going to see them do with spiritual awareness? For another thing, if the Pope ever read the Bible from cover to cover and understood it, he would realize in two different places it talks about what sins, which is a word they use, cannot be forgiven. Murder and rape are two of them. So if he's going there to jail and to say, I forgive you and pray over these people, what right does he have to do that? And who, who does he really think is going to forgive them? If we're dealing with their religion that they're supposed to be following. All right, I'm not going to say I agree with it or not. 
even though I do in a lot of ways. But that's just karma that people will have to pay and deal with. So uh, how long do they stay in jail? The average murderer, if they're, what, 25, 30, will stay in jail another 30 years, 50 years? Imagine that. Do you know what it costs per year, per prisoner in jail? Roughly $150,000 a year. Is the Pope going to pay for all these people? I doubt it. Is he going to pay for some of them? I truly doubt it. So he's going to tell them, oh, you're forgiven. And then what? He takes on that karma himself because you can't do something that you know you're not supposed to do if you're following a religion. If you're not following a religion, create a new one. Create the rules and regulations that you want to live by. I don't believe in killing, period. Uh, but let them kill each other, I would say. Let them. Open up an arena and let them kill each other like they did in the gladiator days. Put one meal out there. Whoever kills the other person gets to eat a meal. Sounds horrible, but uh, would you rather feed that prisoner for another 50 years at $150,000 a year? Really? Uh, and what do you want to do? Reprogram this person to think that he's uh, going to come out into the real world in 50 years? Really? Uh, there was a movie called Escape from New York. Uh, if you didn't see it, it's an old movie. Watch it. Just watch the idea of it. Prisoners were thrown on the island, New York City, the island. It was surrounded by barbed wire fences and, and security. And the prisoners were allowed to do whatever they wanted inside there. They could live in their own little hell world they create and die in there. And whatever they did was their choice, but they were all killers. So that would eliminate us paying for every single one of them. It sounds hardcore. Uh, and now the Pope wants to eliminate the death sentence. No, he wants to keep, keep them in jail for another 50 years. So if he wants that, let him pay for it. Again, I don't believe in killing. Who has the power to go inside a room and turn on a switch that's going to kill somebody else? Because somebody tells you to do something and you do it doesn't justify it. When you're given a gun and told to walk to a city and shoot every, everybody in that city, man, woman, and child, doesn't make it right. Just because your president, your government said so, doesn't make it right. If you have some spiritual morals or truth, then again, well, we're defending our country. What country is that? Planet Earth? The Russians think the same thing. The Chinese think the same thing. The Japanese think. They all think they're defending their country. From what? Each other? That we're all supposed to be one with? When people get their morals straight, which is a word that very few people have a clue, and realize when two people go to fight, like in a boxing, boxing match, each one prays to their God to beat the other person up. Who do you think God listens to? How about neither? How about you just beat each other up and whoever stands up is the one that's going to get paid more money? Like the last fight that went off, it was how much did they each make? $150 million? Uh, and they were getting paid, I think, I, I was in, an incredible number after the 10th round just to punch each other. Is society that sick and perverted? That all that money went to that reasoning? Because that was the money they made, never mind all the studios and people that showed it, the cable companies, all the money they made. Uh, where all that money went? Did it help the homeless? Did it help the abused children? Starving people? I don't think so. So when we, we go to watch a football game, baseball game, hockey game, and you spend $80, I don't know what they charge for tickets now or anything, and you bring your whole family there, how much money are you spending? For what? To see two people to push a little thing around on the ground? Our morals are so screwed up because there are none. We accept things because we're programmed to believe, like the old commercials, what is it? Football, baseball, hot dogs, and beer? Is that society of the United States? Is that what we're about? Why they get paid that kind of money? Where a farmer who makes food so that you can live and survive gets barely enough money to pay for his farm 
and a lot of the farmers were put out of business because they were just too small. They were given grain, another true, true story, given grain that's uh, coated so that it doesn't grow, meaning they have to buy three times the amount of seed to grow 1% of what should be growing. Uh, it's a horrible thing, but when you think about when an actor gets paid $10 million to entertain you, and a farmer gets $10 to grow corn, or not even corn anymore, but one of the vegetables for you, carrots, uh, and they don't make any money. I hope you can still hear me. It's like just horrible rainstorm hitting, the, hitting us right now. Uh, here's a solution. Here's an idea I came up with. I'm going to clone it, <laughs> copy it, and put it out there. How do we prove or determine if a person is guilty of a crime in the first place? What if 10 people don't like you and they all say they saw you kill a person and go to court? You'll probably be convicted. Now, here's a system I, I call the just system. If we really wanted to prove if somebody was guilty or innocent, meaning no matter how good the lawyer is, they wouldn't be able to get them off, which would be more critical to the world, making a better place for the planet, which they don't care because we let the justice system go the way it is. Here's a scenario. Please get a pencil and paper and write these down. own consciousness and your own enfoldment. Not like the workshops out there. It's not like you got to pay to hear anything. Nothing's that complicated. Nothing should be that expensive. When it comes to spiritual truth, for a word, it doesn't have to be any of that. It should be cheap and simple. Because if it's not, people will, not, will fall by the wayside and not be involved with what's really happening. So I, I'll get into that uh, a little bit later. But I want to do uh, this part about the dreaming thing and how we're going to get out of where we are. Okay, how do we make this a better place? How do we become better people? Well, I'm not talking about going out and get a job for $100,000 because that's not going to make you a better person, really. It might make your house better, your car better, but uh, inside you doesn't change much. Well, I'm going to keep you up on the latest things happening right now because I always feel... What's going on in a moment is where we are. So just so you know, today, within the past hour, Chile had another 6.4 earthquake and a uh, 5.1 as well. In the past hour, the ring of fire has been escalating so bad. Indonesia has been getting clobbered the past week with a 6.6. .6. Uh, so we have this ring of fire that's growing hotter and hotter. And if you notice, the places that are getting hotter is Australia, all the islands around it, not Australia itself, and I don't know why. Uh, every single island around it has up to 6.9 earthquakes. Uh, then we go up to South America, the whole borderline of that. But Puerto Rico and those islands up there are getting clobbered as well, not with like six and sevens, but every day, three or four, Puerto Rico and the islands around there. So it has never been this bad in the past 100 years. So we're going to go into why is the Pope and the government talking about global warming? Is it real? Is it not? Uh, if you don't follow news, if you don't go on the internet and check out things like that, you're not going to find the truth because nobody out there mainstream is going to tell you.
I, I usually play a song, and it's by Ozzy, and it's a dreamer, and it's about dreaming. And it's sadly, uh, most people on planet Earth live in dream world. I'm going to get into it. And I'm bringing the Pope and the President as well. So sit back. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, okay. Uh, my idea for my show uh, is to bring truth out. So when I get into topics, if you have something, you can email me, text me, whatever. Uh, I will respond if it's pertaining to what we're talking about. I feel right now, uh, I'm a dreamer. I would hope that aliens or the little gods, I call the, the uh, deities little gods, will come down and help save mankind before the human race destroys the planet. Because the Pope and the President aren't going to be saving the oceans anytime soon. The creatures on the planet that are dying the forest, or even the food we eat. So uh, I call it, I'm a dreamer in that way. I mean, I hope, wish that it does, but I don't sit here waiting for it to happen because I know it's probably not going to. So my name is Tommy Hawksblood. The title, uh, adventuresintothestrange.com is my webpage. Uh, this is Project Camelot. Thanks to Carrie Cassidy. I uh, hope you enjoy the show. Hope you get something out of it. Uh, so, greetings everyone. I like to do a few things before I start my show to keep everybody up to date what's happening on the planet. But the title for today is Make Me President, or maybe the new Pope. Uh, before I get into that, I just want to say the idea of my show is, to me, it's important because what I want to do is help everyone look a little deeper inside themselves to touch their own spirit, their own soul understanding who and what they are, not what anybody else is or what everybody wants you to believe you are. But I want to give you a way to search for a higher level of your own. All right, if you notice what the Pope's doing, I'm sure a lot of people are following him that don't watch TV in general uh, and see where he's going, what he's saying, uh, and give him a lot of credit, which we will get into because I don't agree with a lot of that. Uh, he's talking about global warming. Uh, then he talks about the homeless, and then that other word, forgiveness. Well, does he want to forgive people? Uh, we'll, we'll think about it. Do you think the Pope is going to go around the world and forgive everybody? And who is he to forgive everybody? Does he have the right to do it? Well, Catholic religion believes so. Uh, but he went out there, met with some native people, and said, uh, he was asking them for forgiveness. Really? Uh, that's something, there's something really bad going on there. Uh, I'm just trying to get a couple things out before we get into some of these in a little more hardcore way. Uh, why should they forgive the Pope? They shouldn't. I don't believe they should. 